What is a store without inventory? I don't know. What is inventory without vendors, vendor terms, and vendor shipping options? I still don't know. In this video, we're going to be talking about inventory basics, but before we talk about inventory, we need to talk about how we get inventory. And so, we're going to need to be covering vendors, vendor terms, and vendor shipping options. And to do most of these things, we're going to go to utilities at the top. And let's start with vendor terms. Now, your vendors may all have different defaults, different terms, but I'm just going to add one vendor term here called default. As you can see, um, how much of a discount is the vendor giving us on defaults? 25%. How nice of them, right? And discount days, if I can pay off whatever I bought from the vendor in, I'm going to say, 45 days, um, that discount is valid. Payment doable in, completely paid off, it should be expected to be paid off in a total of three months. Number of installments, one or many, and we're going to post this to accounts payable. And I'm going to say that it should be paid out in three installments. Okay, boom, we have our vendor terms. Great. I'm going to close that out, and you can put as many sets of vendor terms in here as you want. I'm just doing one for the sake of simplicity. Next, we need to talk about vendor shipping methods. How is the vendor going to get their product to us? So to utilities we go, vendor shipping options, and we are going to add a vendor shipping option. What do we call it in the code? We can either call it something like FDX for FedEx or FDO for FedEx Overnight or Blue for UPS Blue. We're going to call this FDO for FedEx Overnight, F-E-D-E-X overnight okay and we can add more of these but for our example here all of our vendors only ship by FedEx overnight close now let's add some vendors 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 what would the world be without vendors I don't know da, da, da. utilities menu vendors <laughs> sorry I just had to and then we go to add and what's the vendor ID? So we're going to say this vendor ID is MSFT for Microsoft. Vendor name is Microsoft. Account number with said vendor. It's not required. The only things that are absolutely required are the things marked in green. So we are not actually going to bother to fill these out. But our vendor terms we will because that is required. Okay. And we can set it to vendor skew equals our skew, which is a nice little thing to do if we wanted to. And we jump around in these various tabs, see if there's anything else we need to deal with. Contacts, we can add various contacts. So if we have somebody at Microsoft that we call and we need to place an order, we can add them in. Shipping addresses, if we need to ship something back to them, we can put in their address. And we can put in different addresses for, like, billing, you know, for sending our, our uh, payables to them. Uh, any notes here about the vendor and any transaction history we've had with the vendor. So, there we go. There we go. We've got us uh, some Microsoft in here. We can put some more vendors in here, which I'm actually going to do off-camera. Um to kind of give us some more data to work with and I'll come back once I've populated some more vendors and we will then in the next movie talk about inventory so just a minute guys 
I'm going to pause the video and we're going to talk and I'm going to get this done and then we're going to talk about it. Okay, welcome back guys. As we can see, I've added a few more of these vendors in here. As you can tell, I got bored. <laughs> I got bored and I added Pepsi, GW Micro, Apple Inc., and Burger King. <laughs> You'd have more vendors than that, but you'd get the point. So, I actually forgot to show you guys something, and that's how to make those shipping IDs work uh, by default. So, let's go ahead and edit some of these, and I intentionally goofed the rest of them after I realized I did this. So, let's go to Apple, and you see where it says Default Shipping ID. You click the little Look Up button, choose our FedEx Overnight, pop it over into that list. How many days does it take to get here? We're going to say one. And this will help it calculate um, expected arrival dates of our um, orders. So we're going to edit. I'm going to go down here to default shipping days. Shipping ID. And then we're going to OK. And I'm just making this ridiculously simple for example's sake, guys. When you go to create your... Um, your things, your vendors, you would want to make sure to fill that out. And ooh, I actually have been forgetting to select these. <laughs> you notice I've been forgetting to select these. I've just been putting them over there and not selecting them. That's that's bad. So we're gonna see. I didn't select that, and it would help if I actually hit select. Which means I would have to go in there and change all these around. Okay, what other ones did I not do? Yep. Did GW Micro. Okay, I'm going to pop this over here like that. And we're going to select it. Now, in the real world, your vendors will not all be using FedEx overnight, I don't think. I've never seen it, so... But, hey, this is a lab. We get to make things a little bit weird. Okay, so there we go. There's our vendors. Go have fun. And in the next video, we are going to be adding inventory to our inventory list. So that way we can see how that works. So let's do it. I will be back in the next video.